Today we're going to do a little different video. It's going to be a little get to know me a little bit better type of video. I'm going to talk about my thoughts on streaming and the future of streaming and why I collect physical media. So stay tuned. And now, here to entertain you all, because every day he's hustling, Side Hustle Cinema. Welcome back to the channel, Side Hustle Cinema here. And today's video is going to be a little bit different. Hopefully you guys want to see this type of video every now and again. It's just a, it's a video that I think a lot of people have done on why they collect physical media. And a lot of people have put in their, you know, their opinions on streaming and how that affects physical media and sort of the future of physical media. But yeah, hopefully you find it interesting. And if you do, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and comment on anything we talk about today. I don't say this that often, but follow me on Instagram. It's Side Hustle Cinema, and I follow all movie-related pages back. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, and I pretty much follow anyone back, as long as it ain't like a bunch of porn. And on Instagram, you can always get in touch with me uh, through my DMs. They're always open. I'm not hard to get in touch with. If you just want to reach out and say, hey, talk about movies, talk about whatever, yeah, I, I don't mind. I don't mind answering. So whenever you collect physical media, you know, movies, you have a big movie collection, people always want to know, well, you know, do you like streaming? Or are you against streaming? And the answer is not really. I mean, I, I don't hate it. I think everything has its place. And then they always ask, well, you know, do you collect movies, uh, you know, as opposed to streaming? And the truth for me is not really. One really doesn't have much to do with the other. I've heard a lot of people who have done these types of videos that will point out a lot of the same uh, it's, it always seems to be the same reasons as why they collect and, and why they don't stream. And for me, most of those reasons, you know, I don't want to discount anyone, you know, and whatever they believe, but I, I, don't, I hardly see any of them being that relevant, to be honest with you. I mean, if you have Netflix and you have the HD package, it's really good quality. I mean... The picture isn't bad at all. And the same goes for Disney. It's really good picture on there as well. I've got very little complaints about the streaming quality of video. You can make an argument about the audio though. That one for me definitely applies. They talk about, you know, you're getting a compressed audio signal. And for that one, that one actually kind of applies for me. It's not so much the quality of the audio. Uh, for me, it really comes down to, like, the encoding. Even when something has uh, Dolby Atmos and I'm playing it through, like, a streaming service, it never sounds as good. It never seems to go to the right channels the way it does when you watch on disc. You know, one of the examples of that one I would bring up would be like uh, Kong vs. Godzilla. You know, I watched, I streamed that one first. That's where I first saw it. And it sounded really good, but it didn't sound nearly as good as when I bought the disc and, and rewatched it. Uh, now, the picture quality, it was similar. You know, if there was a big difference, it wasn't really noticeable. Maybe if you looked at a side-by-side -side screenshot, you could see a little bit of a difference. But for the most part, it was pretty much, you know, a great picture on, on both. So for me, though, having like a home theater type setup, you know, I have a 5.2.4 Dolby Atmos, you know, theater setup. So, you know, for me, the audio makes a real big difference. But I know that... There's not many people out there that have that type of setup. Most people, like, probably have a sound bar at, at kind of best. And so, if that's what you're working with, then the audio probably isn't going to be a big deal for you. 
Another thing I hear people talk about a lot is, you know, what if they take away the movie off my streaming service and you got to find it on another one? That That's a valid point, especially, you know, right now. Uh, but the way I see streaming services moving in the future, and I think this is coming kind of rapidly, is, you know, a lot of people are cutting the cable cord and they're going to streaming services as their form of cable. What's kind of happening though is streaming services are becoming the new cable companies and as things progress you're going to see more and more mergers. You're going to see less streaming services and more giant streaming services. You've already got several that offer live TV to the networks. You know last year um, during football season Amazon had a deal to the Thursday night games, you know, along with CBS. CBS had the had the rights to the game, but but uh, you know Amazon had the rights to do that as well. So if if you had Amazon Prime, you could watch the football game, and it was very popular for them. And so there's already been talk that Netflix is exploring an option of bringing in live sports. This might sound good to you, but if you like your streaming services the way they are right now, then this is probably the worst news you could hear. Because when they start to do live sports, when they're paying for the rights to, to air live sports, those are so expensive. There's almost no way that the price of, of these subscription services aren't going to skyrocket. And you might be able to just get like a sports add-on at first, but eventually it's all going to be bundled together. You know, you're going to get live broadcasting of, of the networks, ABC, NBC, CBS. You're going to get those where they're, they're going to be more available on all the different, you know, through all the different streaming companies. It's basically going to be like getting your cable service a la carte. And by the time you get everything you want, it's going to be as high as your old cable bill used to be. And once everyone is relying on just that one thing, well then the price will just continue to go up and up and up and up. And it, it's not going to stop until you're back to paying the $200 a month or whatever it is that you were paying on your you know, cable bill. So I really don't think streaming is going anywhere. Uh, I think it's only going to get bigger. I think we'll see mergers. I think we'll see them basically turn into, you know, the new Comcast, the new DirecTV, the new Dish Network, you know, except it'll be Amazon, it'll be Netflix, you know, maybe, maybe Comcast or DirecTV ends up, you know, jumping in and just doing a streaming version of, of their stuff. Well, they already have it. I mean, they already have, you know... DirecTV already has DirecTV Go or DirecTV Now or whatever it is they call it. It's going to basically be like your cable company, except the only thing is, is with cable company, you got a lot better picture and audio. And now everything's just going to be over the internet. But I really don't look forward to that day. Streaming will probably get better in the future. I mean, we've got 5G becoming more available, you know, across the country. Um, the pandemic caused a lot of areas that couldn't get uh, Wi-Fi. You know, they built a lot of towers because, you know, they had to do remote learning and Zoom meetings for people working at home. And so they worked a lot on, on Wi-Fi coverage and speeds throughout the country. So I don't necessarily look at streaming as the enemy. It's just, it is what it is. And it really has little to do with why I collect. Growing up, I, I never considered myself a collector at all. But I did. I had VHS when I was a kid. We had a, you know, we had a VCR in the house since like early on, since I was like 11 or so. And you know, I had a pretty good VHS uh, collection. And eventually, you know, I started in on the on the DVDs. And I had several of those. Like I said, I, I didn't consider myself a collector at all. I just accumulated a lot. And when it got to 
Blu-ray. Uh, I did start to pick up some Blu-ray, but then I was kind of, at that point, I was sort of into renting a lot of movies. You know, as a kid, I, I wanted to own a video store when I got older. And then, you know, I saw that dream kind of go away when Blockbuster came out and just started killing all the mom and pop video stores in my town. I mean, they, they just couldn't compete. And they died. You know, Blockbuster killed a lot of them. And then, of course, Netflix came along and killed Blockbuster. I know, Blockbuster kind of killed themselves. I've, I know the story. But over the years, I had so many Blu-rays, DVDs. And I went back and forth on, on the whole clutter issue and things like that. So, eventually, I, I, I got rid of a lot of my DVDs and Blu-rays. I, I gave away several hundred and ended up selling a bunch more in a yard sale. I did that twice. I had two yard sales. I don't know how many titles I sold. I ended up leaving myself with just a lot of my horror DVDs. I didn't leave myself with like a very big collection at all. I got, I got rid of quite a bit. You know, there was something else about collecting physical media, about collecting movies that was just different. And it really came to the movies themselves. You know, because I don't think of the movies, you know, as just movies sometimes. You know, when I think of, like, the original Stephen King It, you know, one of my first memories is where I watched it. I was at my Aunt Deb's house and we were all there in the living room and they they had recorded it you know off of uh went off TV and you know we all sat in the living room and we watched the whole thing you know all three I think it was like two or three nights of of TV we watched it all in one sitting and I was there with you know my brothers and sisters and my my cousins were there you know, that became part of the memory of the movie. When I first saw Goonies, was at a drive-in theater. You know, it's, it's so many things, so many memories that are tied to movies. It really goes beyond the movie. You know, it's that nostalgia. It's looking at your collection on the shelves. It brings you back to when you were a kid wanting to own a video store. You know, getting off school on Friday and going to the, the video store and, and, you know, what are you going to rent for the weekend? You know, it's owning that movie that, you know, was your dad's favorite movie or your grandfather's favorite movie. It's all these memories. That, that's, that's a big part of why I collect. It really just comes down to because I want to and because, you know, these things, these movies are... You know, it's a, it's a time capsule. It's a, it's a photograph, a snapshot, and each one holds some kind of memory. Some better than others, you know. I mean, of course we do blind buys and things like that, but, you know, so you, down the road you might make a new memory with one of those movies. I also have a lot of collectibles, and I know a lot of people, you know, especially here lately, it seems like, you know, there's a lot of people are, selling off their their Funko Pops or they're maybe getting rid of their collectibles. I get it. I understand why that would be a thing, but you know, if you enjoy it, do it. You know, embrace it. Don't I hear sometimes people they'll say, "Well, you know, I can't have all these toys. You know, I'm a, I'm an adult. I'm a grown, you know, man. I don't have you know, I don't have I don't have kids or you know I only have a daughter I don't have a son or or whatever it is and and you know they come up they it's like they need to justify they need to have a, a justification for collecting things for collecting movies for collecting you know the NECA figures or Funko Pops or, or posters or whatever it is that you like to collect you know you don't have to justify it you don't owe anyone an explanation you know it doesn't have to be because of of you know you're afraid that your favorite movie isn't going to be available on streaming and that's why you collect physical media it doesn't have to be because of that 
It can just be because you want to. And that's good enough. That's a good enough reason. It doesn't have to be because of poor streaming services or lossless audio. It can just be because it makes you happy. And that's one of the most important things you can do for yourself is just allow yourself to be happy. Just enjoy something. And if you have, if you're lucky enough to have a little space carved out somewhere in your house, whether it's a whole room or just a corner or something, where you can display your movies, where you can put the things around you that make you happy, then I say do it. It's nice to have, you know, a little bubble, a little sanctuary where you can, you know, come and, and for a little while, be able to check out a reality. Let all the horrors of the world, you know, all the divisiveness and the hatred out there, just let all that go for a little bit. And just chill out and watch, you know, a comedy or a horror movie or action, whatever it is that you're into. Whether you do it with family, loved ones, friends, or just by yourself, it's a good escape. It's, it's fun. So it doesn't matter if you're an adult and you collect toys. You know, if people find that weird, then so be it. Be weird. Be extra weird. Go crazy with it. <laughs> but, yeah, just don't worry what people think. Just do, do the things that you want to do. Stuff that makes you happy. Be who you are. I know I talked a lot about streaming. Probably sounds like I'm a big fan of streaming. I, I think it's okay. I think we can I think we can have both. I don't think physical media is going anywhere anytime soon. I'm not worried about it being gone in my lifetime. Is it getting a little smaller at the stores? It is. But part of that's just because of the times that we live in right now. If Hollywood gets back to putting out full a full array of movies. If we start getting more of these uh, titles back, I, I think they'll put a few more racks in the store. I'm not too worried about that. But even if it does go away, it's always going to be available online. There's always going to be boutique titles, you know, boutique companies that are going to fill the void, that are going to, you know, find ways to make us keep buying the same movie over and over and over. I don't think that's going away. There's too much money there. I think 4K is here to stay. I don't think we're going above 4K. But, you know, you, you've got to find your people, you know. you got to reach out and find your people because not everyone in your life is going to be into movies. I mean, everyone I know likes movies, but they're not into movies the way I am. And that's fine. But still, you can reach out and you can find those people. You know, it's one of the great things about the Internet. You don't have to go very far. And that's one of the great things about YouTube. That's one of the reasons, it's probably one of the biggest reasons why I started a YouTube channel. Was just to find my people. Which is uh, you guys. So I guess to wrap it up, I'll say I don't think streaming is necessarily evil. I don't think physical media is going to die. I think there's room for both. I think streaming is going to get a lot more expensive and will become the new cable. But I don't think it's going away either. I think it'll only get bigger. And I think I'm going to keep collecting because I want to. And that's okay. And I'm going to keep buying toys, Funko Pops, NECA figures. And I'm going to keep doing that because, well, I want to. And if you think that's really weird, that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> But if you think that's cool, then you should subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button and drop a comment. I'm here to be with people that want to be here. Like-minded individuals that love physical media, that love movies. So that's going to do it for today's video. A little long-winded. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, long live physical media.